Hello and welcome to this Insmar Conference 2003 tutorial. I'm Gjeldjorn Peters and I will explain a bit in this tutorial about the pre regger package and about the inclusive systematic review registration form, which is actually where this package started and probably the pre-registration form most of interest to uh, delegates at this conference. These slides will be available, um, the QR code and the link are in the bottom left corner and this slide will also return at the end. And this is a recording so you can always just um, go back and get it if you're missing it. So this started with me supervising a student who was doing a scoping review about something soccer related. Don't ask me why, I'm not into soccer, but he found it very interesting. And then we wanted to pre-register pre the scoping review, as one does. Um, and it turned out that there's actually no service that allows this. So I went to Twitter and asked whether anybody knows a service that I didn't know about yet, where you could pre-register such a form. Um, it turned out that actually there, were, there wasn't yet, but in the process, as it got retweeted and a bit more people responded, I met uh, Nikki, who had the same situation. He does studies into veterinary science and he also couldn't uh, pre-register his um, studies and work with students anywhere. So we had the idea to develop one and to get in touch with Open Science Framework if they were into this, so that we could add one to the Open Science Framework. At some point, Brian uh, Nosek responded and that got the ball rolling. Um, and then we got together a group of people, which kind of snowballed into a larger group over time. And we started working on this form. And the idea was of this form that it would be as inclusive as possible so that you could pre-register any kind of uh, systematic review, whether it was um, a systematic review into case law because you're like a legal scholar or anthropology or psychology or really anything. And also not specific to any review type. So you can use it for meta-analyses, but also for scoping reviews or qualitative reviews or whatever. As a consequence, we didn't have any items that are mandatory. And there are quite a lot of items that are, for example, relevant for meta-analyses, but not relevant for, um, for scoping reviews. So the idea is kind of that you don't use this form if there is a better form that better fits your specific use case, but because often there isn't, you can use this as a kind of generic fallback form. So we posted it on Meta Archive preprint. Um, you can get it at this short doi G5FJ. Um, this link will also return later on if you want. Um, and that was that. But in this process, I kind of started thinking about this, about this process and the fact that it was necessary and possible. And I realized that this is actually one of the problems of the current pre-registration landscape. As you can see here, this is of course the pre-registration landscape. And in this pre-registration landscape, there are some pre-registration providers. For example, clinicaltrials.gov for uh, RCTs, randomized clinical trials. Of course, Prospero for health-related systematic reviews. There's the Open Science Framework for lots of uh, different pre-registration forms. Um, and because of this landscape, the typical pre-registration workflow is that researchers select a provider, they go to their website, they create a new form, they fill out the items that are there, they submit it, and then it's stored in the provider uh, provider's database. It's published, maybe after an embargo, on the website of the pre-registration provider, and then it's shared in an article or a website or some other means. Um, I realized that in this process, there's some room for improvement. One of those, I think the most important ones, is to democratize science and to make it easier for everybody, regardless their ontological, epistemological, methodological uh, perspectives, to create a pre-registration form that fits their use case well. In addition, I think it's important that pre-registrations, as much as possible, are machine-readable and can easily be improved or imported and updated or reused. And um, since I use R, and I expect a lot of people at this conference also use R, uh, I thought it would be nice if you could integrate pre-registration in your R Markdown-based workflow. So that's why I started creating pre -Rucker. So starting from the beginning, this is an example of two pre-registration forms into qualitative research. And for qualitative research, there are, um, there's the concept of saturation, when a researcher thinks they have enough data and they will stop data collection. This is one pre-registration form for qualitative research. And here they, um, they kind of enforce, they kind of mandate a specific definition of saturation. They follow Fuji and Nash of 2005, 
and they say that is what saturation is. But there are different definitions of saturations, as a saturation, as always. Um, and this other pre-registration form for qualitative and quantitative ethnographic studies allows the researcher to specify their own definition for data saturation. This means that it can make quite a difference which form you use as a researcher. We know that actually this diversity in ontological, epistemological and methodological approaches is actually beneficial. Science approaches are uh, proceeds, progresses faster if there is more heterogeneity in how people study things, because there is no one single correct way. From this perspective, of course, it becomes a bit problematic that there are only a few forms available. UNESCO also recognizes this in the Open Science Recommendation, which was adopted by all member states in 2021. So in principle, we all already um, believed it. Um, and there they argue that actually it's important that the infrastructure we use and the repositories we use are adapted to the user needs. So that basically whatever your ideas are about how things should be studied, you can actually work with, with this infrastructure. And currently, because there are only a few providers, the form items that they choose to include in the forms and how they're phrased and, and how the instructions are added change, they influence how people do their research. And this decreases the epistemic and methodological uh, diversity, which is a problem because it kind of slows down science. And in addition, ideally, we have open infrastructure that's as much as possible under the control of the whole scientific community, rather than a few actors who happen to host pre-registration forms. As I said, it was the first reason for developing pre-regger, and I think the most important one. Second reason is to make pre-registrations uh, machine readable. This is also something that UNESCO um, recognizes as important. It's also something that's um, recognized more wide, widely as important. And I think especially at this conference where we do systematic reviews, I don't think I really have to argue very much that it would be great if stuff would just be machine readable rather than having to code stuff and making mistakes. And then finally, being an R user, it would be nice if you don't actually have to go to this separate website and type stuff in, but you can just have the pre-registration as a part of your R Markdown based workflow, which in my case also means that you can use Git and you can easily go back and see what was changed when by who, etc. So now I'll give some brief demonstrations of uh, pre-regger using this inclusive systematic review form. And we'll start with creating and importing a form. If you want to create a form, you don't actually do it in R. You can do it in R, but it's usually easier, also because you often collaborate with others who might not use R, to use a spreadsheet. Um, I have a, an empty template. Again, the link will be provided later. And this template allows you to specify the pre-registration form's content. So not the, the content for a study, it's not, you're not creating a pre-registration, you're creating a pre-registration form. So you have some metadata, the title of the form. For example, you could say there's an SMARC pre-registration form, uh, the name, the date, etc. Then there are some instructions you can add, which are available to people who complete the form. There are the form items, of course. They have a section that they're placed into. You can see those here in the third uh, work sheet. So the sections have like an identifier, a label, and a description. And items have referred to their identifier, to their section with the identifier. They also have an identifier themselves. Uh, and they have a human readable label and a description. Um, so basically, this is quite easy for most people also not not too IT savvy people and not too R minded people to edit and they can actually specify their forms content here. Then once you did this, you can import it into R. So this URL is just the URL from Google. If you click on the address bar, you can copy it. You can also, you have to make sure though that it's available to everybody. So it has to be, you can, you have to use the share button to make sure that it is uh, viewable by everybody. Then, once you've made it viewable by everybody, you can import it like this. So now we're importing it, and now we have it available in R. And we can view the content here. As you can see, there's not actually any content yet. If we would now edit the spreadsheet, um, I won't do that because of time, but if we would edit the spreadsheet and import it again, then whatever we change would be visible here. 
this object that we just created can be used to add content. But before we start uh, moving on to adding content, let's think about how you actually get form uh, content, or maybe I could, should have called it form structure. Because of course, before you can start putting stuff in a spreadsheet, you have to know what you want to be in what what you want there to be in your form. So there are um, four, five ways to do this. The fifth way is just combining more than one of the first four. Um, the durationalist approach, the expert uh, consensus approach, the Delphi method, or scoping reviews, which I think will appeal to this audience especially. Um, before I go into that, there's I want to like draw attention to the fact that there is no consensus on what should be in a pre-registration form. And it kind of depends on what you think pre-registration is for. So uh, John McFeetrys here um, wrote about pre-registrations and he argues that it should be used for all social science research activities. And you could extend this to saying that it should be used for all systematic, all research science activities. And here the idea is that it's not limited to situations where a hypothesis is tested or p-value is reported because the goal is mostly to restrict research degrees of freedom. Basically, to make sure that anywhere in the process, you don't, either consciously or unconsciously, introduce bias. And if you do, it becomes more uh, visible to yourself, so that you can try to correct for it later. And visible to others, of course. And if you deviate, you can always argue why you thought it was useful to deviate, which is, um, well, <laughs> seems the least we can do as researchers. However, Daniel Lakens uh, disagrees and here argues that pre-registration is useful in a context where you test predictions, where you test hypotheses. And therefore, if you don't study a hypothesis, you just do descriptive research and you just want to describe a bit of reality, Daniel Lakens would argue you shouldn't use pre-registration. My personal view aligns more with that of John McFeetrys, but my point is that that doesn't matter because there are different views and again, like with the other, like with basically doing science in general, there is no one correct way. It's actually beneficial if people have different ideas about what should be in a pre-registration form. And it's beneficial if we have a plethora of pre-registration forms. So with the rationalist approach, that's the simplest, just you or you and a group of colleagues sit together and develop a form. That's it. The benefits are that it's efficient and quick and you have full control of the degree of specificity. So if you have a certain study design that you use a lot with your lab, you can just create a form for that. That's fine. Drawbacks are, of course, that your procedure is not systematic and reproducible, um, and it might only be applicable to rare use cases. You can make it a bit more uh, systematic by using expert consensus. Of course, you'd have to think about how you define expert, but that's a different problem. Um, and then they basically just use the rationalist approach. They also just think about what should be in the form. The benefit is that you immediately have consensus with this group and that helps with adopting the, um, adopting the form. The drawbacks are that the process is often still not super well documented and the selection of the experts determines what you end up with. Then you can use the Delphi method, which is a more systematic um, version of this uh, expert consensus. So it has the benefits of uh, the expert consensus method, but it's more systematic. Um, the nice thing is that the recruitment is often more uh, formalized, like emails are sent to listservs and stuff like that. But the selection remains central. And still, of course, who you want to include determines what you end up with. And of course, you know, if there's no correct, one correct way to do science, there's also no one correct way to determine what an expert is. Scoping reviews are probably the most um, transparent approach you can use. Not in the least place because you can uh, pre-register your scoping reviews. Um, well, and I don't think I have to explain in too much about this to uh, about this to this audience. So it's very systematic and reproducible, but you will always look to the past because you will base it on the existing literature. So you will look at the practices that people applied, and then those will form the basis for your form. And of course, you can combine this in any way you want. That of course makes it more time consuming and expensive, but also better. Okay, so imagine that you chose a way to get your, um, your form structure and item contents and stuff, um, and then you created the form, or you want to reuse somebody else's form and now you're doing a pre-registration. So, and we just saw that we loaded a form, uh, direct, a form specification directly from a spreadsheet. 
But now we'll use one, the inclusive systematic review form, that's included with Preregger. So then you can load it very quickly, and then Preregger can tell you what the next item is to fill. In this case, we haven't actually completed anything yet, so the next item is just the first one, which is the target discipline. Um, now we can look at the content that has been specified in the meta metadata section. We can see that actually nothing has been specified. And then we can specify um, the target discipline, the first item, using pre-regger, uh, pre-reg specify. Basically, you pass the object that holds the pre-registration, and then you use the item identifier and the content to specify what you want to add. And then you store the result again in an object, usually the same object. Um, you can include validation rules in your pre-registration form specification. In this case, what I passed, passed the validation. Um, and th then it's stored. So now we can look at whether this helped. And it did help. So now here we have the um, psychology as a value. Like this, you can specify everything. Of often I think you won't do this in the console, um, but you will want to do this in the... Um, in the, well, in an R markdown file. You can also knit the results immediately. Um, and that's often what you would want to do with the R markdown file as well, so that you can actually include the entire uh, form contents. Okay, so that's how you initialize and fill a form. As I said, that's usually not what you want to do. Usually you want to uh, write an R markdown template. And for that, I'll show some examples from uh, Nitro. Nitro is actually from a bit of a different R package that's not completely done yet, Meta before. Meta before is mostly intended to help you with um, extraction. It helps you specify how information should be extracted and then scalably and transparently extract uh, data in a way that can be combined with data from other studies. Um, this is accompanied by this Nitro, which is a narrated illustration of a review outline. Um, and in the, which is an R markdown file. And in this R markdown file, there are already the commands to generate a pre-registration template using the included inclusive systematic review template, which then writes it, an R markdown template, to pre-registration um, auto-generated, which you then rename to something else. In this case, we use pre-registration.rmd. Because, of course, otherwise, if you accidentally run this again, you override your specified pre-registration stuff. So if you run this command, this R markdown file is created, which is created, which looks like this. Um, and this R markdown file contains, that's the first chunk here, contains the entire form specification. That's all the way at the bottom, so that is not in the way. Um, but it's loaded first. And then it initializes this form that has been defined in the R code at the bottom that's loaded at the top. Then here it shows the information that was uh, specified in the pre-registration specification. For example, these are the instructions that are added in the instructions uh, worksheet that I showed earlier. And then it has a sequence of chunks for every item. So basically, you can just fill those out. Here is the target discipline, so you can add the target discipline. You can add the, um, the title. You can add the authors, etc. And here are the name, the human readable name, the label, uh, and the instructions for every item. So for tasks and roles, describe the expected tasks and roles, blah, blah, blah. So you can give this to students or to collaborators, and they can just fill this out. This can be rendered, of course, to PDF but it can also be rendered to HTML. And if you render it to HTML, or you include it in an um, R markdown file, then it also includes the form and the, uh, so the form specification and the data as JSON. So you can look at that at the pre-registration, pre-regger um, package down website. You have this where you can see how you can import the pre-registration or a pre-registration form from embedded JSON from a URL. This is, for example, the vignette for creating a pre-registration form, which is also here, that's this one. And that also includes an example of the created pre-registration form, which creates, which includes 
the pre-registration form specification as well as the data as JSON, which is imported here. And then here you can see that the content has been imported properly. These are the links that I promised um, earlier. I'll move on from this slide because this is a video. Um, and that was actually it in terms of uh, what I can do in terms of showing uh, showing pre-regger a bit and explaining a bit why it was created um, and the form itself. So I would say um, go visit either pre-regger.openscience um, or the um, DOI for the, for the form, the inclusive systematic review uh, form, and then um, go play around with it. And if you have any questions or issues, um, you can mostly find me at Mastodon. Um, I, I am technically still at Twitter, but you can also um, email me, although Mastodon probably works best. Thank you very much.